the world's most famous clown. All right, there, doggy, simmer down. Grandpa Smokey came here and I stopped that down, boy. Down. Bozo! Bozo! I wonder where Bozo is. Huh? Hi, boys and girls. It's old Grandpa Smokey. <laughs> Bozo Clown hired me for a janitor and a handyman cause I'm pretty handy, I tell you, and I'm going to do all the fixing around this here turkey somehow. Now, let's see now. I got my dogs tied up on this rope because if I let go, they run all over the surface, so I got to hold on them no matter what I do. Let me just put this stuff on the barrel. Now, come on, doggy. Give me a little room. Down, down, boy. Down, down. Yeah, that's better. I'll hold on to these things with my life and I'll fix up this wood over here. Brought my snowshoes in case it snows around the circus. Never could tell you though, it used to snow ah, up there in the Yukon about 17 feet a season. Let's see, oh golly, I can't work with holding on to this rope. I think I just tie it on my leg here and then I can hold on to the doggies at the same time and they won't get away. Now hold still, doggy. That's good. There, that's good. Now, next, I'll just get this rope and I'll just climb up. Hey, 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 to the ladder, and then I'll hold on to the doggies, and then I'll be able to do my job what I was hired to do. Cause Bozo, he wants a good hand to man, and I'll be the best one they have. There, that's good. Now I'll just, I'll just take my, uh, and put it up over here. Put it right over there. Hey! Come back! Hey! hey! My doggies running away! Yes, hurry, 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 step right up, everybody. Step right up for another stupendous Barkerville magic trick. Hi, I'm Barkerville, and I have something to show everybody how to do a wonderful magic trick. Now, we have right here, boys and girls, a plain dime. One thin dime, one-tenth of a dollar. Put it right on this table. Now, do you believe that a dime can pass through solid wood? Well, it can just by doing a simple magic trick. Put the dime down on the table like that. Cover it over with a salt shaker like that. Take a napkin and cover over everything with the napkin. And now, boys and girls, we're gonna say some right magic words like, uh, alakazam, alakazoo, and here, the dime is still here. <laughs> oh. Wait, I, I have to say some better magic words. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll say this time, uh, Alakazam, Alakazoo, Alakazam, Alakazoo, and there, the... Gee, the dime is still here, but salt shaker went right through the... It did. The salt shaker went right through the table. Now, that's what I call a magic trick. Well, you be sure to watch next time, boys and girls. I'm going to show you how you can do this very same magic trick. So you be sure to be watching. But right now, let's get back to the big Bozo Circus. Take it away, Bozo. Well, wasn't that terrific, boys and girls? Oh boy, I'm going to try that today. I'm glad he showed us and taught us how to do that trick right now. It's time for Fractured Fairy Tales in ring number two. Take it away, ring number two. You all remember the story of Sleeping Beauty? How as a baby she was put under a spell by a wicked fairy? How when she had grown up she pricked her finger with a needle and fell into a deep sleep from which she could be wakened only by a kiss? You remember too how a fence of thorns grew round the castle to prevent anybody from entering. Anybody but me, that is. 
And just who are you? A prince, naturally. Don't you see the robes, the crown? You want to see my ID card? Well, how do you propose to enter the castle? Easy. I haul out my trusty broadsword and... They don't make broadswords like they used to. Well, the prince was distraught. What was he to do? I'll show you. These they make like they used to. The prince made straight for the tower room. Sleeping beauty, I've come at last. With one kiss, I shall waken you and... Wait a minute. Awake, she's just another princess. Asleep, she's a gold mine. I can see it now. Sleeping Beauty comics, Sleeping Beauty hats, Sleeping Beauty bubble gum, and biggest of all, Sleeping Beauty land. Sure enough, the castle was soon made ready as a great tourist attraction. There was moat land. Have your X coupons ready, please. Have your X coupons ready. There was entrance hall land. Y coupons, please. There was stair land. That's a Z coupon, folks. A Z coupon. And of course, Sleeping Beauty herself. Sleeping Beauty Land was clearly a great success. One million and one, one million and two. Sorry, the castle's closed till 8 a.m. Hold it, Junior. I'm your land of the wicked fairy that put Sleeping Beauty to sleep. Well, <laughs> that calls for some free coupon books. Books, Nook, I want half of this whole setup, or else. Else what? Else I use my magic powers to wake her up. Well, now, we can't have that, can we, partner? And you are my partner, and a charming one at that. Now, wouldn't you like to see some of our Sleeping Beauty land? Why not? Just step this way to Dungeon Land. My, this is spooky. Well, it's very popular. Some people stay here for a long, long time. How does it work? Well, I put these around your wrist, you see? Yes. Then I leave. Well, have a good time. I'll see you in a couple of years, kid. So, once again, the prince was in business for himself. One million sixty-four. One million sixty-five. Hiya, honey. You're back. You broke the chains. Yeah, they don't make them like they used to. Well, partner, how about trying our special submarine ride? Keen. The cement is just a safety precaution. The city makes us do it. I like the way it squishes between my toes. It's quick drying, too. There. Not squishy now, is it? If I like this one, can I go again? I'm afraid not. It's more of a one-way ride. So the prince was once more without a partner. Four million and two. Four million and three. Hello, I'm back. That ride was more fun, especially that first part. But... Imagine, half of all this is mine. Yes, uh, including the souvenir sales. Souvenirs? Uh, how much do they sell for? Well, this one is 75 cents. This one is a dollar. This Sleeping Beauty cowboy lasso is only one sixty-nine. Now, let's see. Carry the four and say, you're in luck, little lady. I am. You betcha. You also get the official Sleeping Beauty Land moon rocket as a bonus gift. Goody! I've always wanted a rocket! And the clever prince had apparently solved his problem. But soon, he had another one. For the next morning, the crowds outside the castle were smaller, and the next day, smaller still. Clearly, Sleeping Beauty was a slipping beauty. And the prince was very sad indeed. Then, suddenly... Hi, sweetie! I'm back! And it was that ever! Ride. Well, you can have the whole thing back now, Toots. Sleeping Beauty Land is a flop. Now, wait a minute. She's been asleep for 20 years, right? Right. Maybe people would pay money to talk to somebody who's been asleep for 20 years. You mean... Yes, we just wake her up. We'll make a fortune. Go ahead and do it. Who, me? You put her to sleep, didn't you? Well, frankly, no. I'm not really a wicked fairy. I'm just wicked. But then how... Easy. I... You kiss her. You're a prince, aren't you? Well, not exactly. I never joined the union. I really make my living beating pigskins. You mean... Yes. I'm a hog flogger. But just then a remarkable thing happened. Sleeping Beauty's eyes opened and she sat up. Don't worry, kids. I wasn't really asleep. Then why the big 20-year act? I just wanted to see if I could make it in showbiz. <laughs> On top of old Smokey, all covered with snow. Well, hi, boys and girls. Here's old Grandpa Smokey here. 
Bozo asked me to clean up around this old stage. He said he's expecting some beautiful lady. Come over here, Madame Du, uh, du Madame Du uh, Du Bill or something like that. I don't know. She's coming up here to sing for everybody. Well, look who's here, a beautiful little lady here. Oh, uh, boy. Excuse me, madam, but my name is Grandpa Smokey. I, I don't think I've had the pleasure of your acquaintance. What's your name, lady? Oh, my name is Madame Du Bud. Oh, you must be that beautiful, um, you must be that lady that they're expecting to sing here today. Is that right, lady? Mm, that's right. I'm going to sing beautiful songs for everybody. Oh, you sing songs. You're going to sing songs like, uh, uh, you know, that rock and roll stuff or the hillbilly or things like that? that? Oh, no. You don't sing that kind of songs. Well, tell me, what kind of songs you going to sing, lady? Well, I'm going to sing opera like they sing at the Metropolitan Opera. Woo! Well, if you're going to sing opera, like, opera? Well, my mammy always told me to be polite to little old ladies. So if you're going to sing, lady, I guess I'll just stand here and I'll appreciate it and I'll listen, all right? Good. Okay, I'll tell the orcs to the start. Okay, Professor, hit it! <laughs> Our pal, Flapjack the Clown. Oh, golly, I want to see what Flapjack's doing today. Hello, Flapjack. Hiya, Flapjack. Nice to see you today. <laughs> well, you look a little sleepy today, Flapjack. What, what are you going to do today? Hmm, you're looking at some ladder there. Oh, there's a sign on the ladder, Flapjack. Yes, what does the sign say? It says, so uh, do not look. Do not look, Flapjack, that's what it says. Mm -hmm. Do not look. You know, the sign says to do something or do not do something. The best thing you have to do is follow what the sign tells you to do. No, sir, now, Flapjack, don't look. <laughs> no fair. You're not supposed to look, so don't you look, Flapjack. <laughs> That's a good boy. See, he's going away now. He's not going to look at all at this. Oh, he came right back again. <laughs> now, come on, Flapjack. You know better than that. Always follow instructions. The sign says do not walk or do not run out in the street. Don't do it. And this particular sign says do not look. So that's what I want you to do, Flapjack. Do not look. Now, pay attention to the sign. Uh-oh. Don't go up. Don't go up on the steps, Flapjack. No, sir. Oh, look, he's sneaking up. He's sneaking up on the... He's looking inside. What are you putting on, Flapjack? You're putting on... Oh, he's putting on glasses. <laughs> You're going to put your glasses on to look now. You know that's not fair. There's no glass in the glasses. How can you look through there? <laughs> oh, that's silly, Flapjack. Let's see what he sees. You see anything, Flapjack? I don't see anything at all. Well, I told you, there's nothing to be seen. That's why the sign says do not look. What's that? Binoculars. You're going to look with binoculars. Do you see anything now? You don't see anything either. I told you. There's nothing to be seen. Now, what do you have? Look at that spyglass. Look at the size of that telescope. 
Now, you're too far back, Flapjack. You won't see anything that way. You're too close now. Go back, Flapjack. That's too far back. Go forward. You're, you're still too close. Do you see anything? I don't think so. You see nothing. I told you. There's nothing to be seen. Oh! oh, boy. Oh, boy. Did you see that? He just took a look and said, he, I didn't, he said, I saw nothing. All of a sudden, pow. Well, when a sign says, do not look, I guess you just have to follow what the sign Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Bozo. And welcome, boys and girls, to the second half of the Big Bozo Circus. I'm Barker Bill, and I want to welcome you all inside. Yes, sir. Continuous seating on the inside for fun, excitement, and good times for everybody. See, boys and girls, let me just tell you something. Before I became a Barker, I traveled all over the world. And one of the many magic tricks I found was this one. And the strangest places of all where I found this trick on the top of Mount Everest in the Himalaya Mountains. I understand that these are the famous Himalaya Mountain magnetic sticks. Let's see what happens if you pull this little string right down to the ground. And now the Himalaya magnetism will work and we'll see what happens. Oh, there we go. Let's try some more Himalaya magnetism and pull this one down. What's that you say? You think there's a string going between all through the sticks? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take a little pair of scissors like this, and I'll just cut the string. And I'll just separate the two sticks, and you can see that there's no string there. I'll even do one better. I'll put the sticks on top of each other like this. And now a little bit of Himalaya Mountain music, and there we go. <laughs> I told you it's Himalaya Mountain magic. What's that you want me to do? Put them far apart? Well, sure. I'll put this one under my arm like that, and I'll hold this one way out. But the Himalaya magnetism will go all the way through the arm. Watch this now. There. <laughs> I wonder if you know how I'm doing this. Think hard. Maybe you can guess it. But right now, let's get back on the inside for the big second half of the Big Bozo Circus. Take it away, Bozo. Step right up, everybody. Oh, boy, I'm going to try that today. I'm glad he showed us and taught us how to do that trick right now. It's time for Fractured Fairy Tales in ring number two. Take it away, ring number two. A long, long time ago, more than a year in fact, a little girl lived with her mother in a little house on the edge of a deep wood. It was a pretty house and she was a pretty girl. Her name was Trisanelda Woofenpickle. But she had <laughs> such lovely golden curls that everybody called her Goldilocks, which you must admit was just as well. Now Goldilocks had just one bad fault. She was very careless, especially with things that belonged to other people. Children who let her play with their toys always wished that they hadn't. <laughs> One day, Goldilocks decided to take a walk into the deep woods. It was going to be a long walk, so she packed a lunch and borrowed her father's compass to show her the way. And off she went. Well, about two sandwiches, a banana, and four prunes later, she decided to start back. But the compass now acted very strangely. She started toward what she thought was home, but the first thing you know, she was walking in circles. Only she didn't know it. Look, footprints. If I follow them, I'm bound to get out of these woods eventually. So Goldilocks wearily trudged round and round in the same old circle for hours. Then, alone and scared, she covered herself with a cloak. Well, almost. And shivered her way through the long, cold night. <coughs> now... Just a little way from where she lay stood an odd-looking house, the home of the Bear family, Papa, Mama, and little Oswald. Breakfast is ready. Mmm, looks good. Oh. Oswald, stop shouting. That wasn't me. It was Pop. Why, Bruce Bear. Hawk. What? Not what? Hawk is hot. It's supposed to be hot. Not that doggone hot. Oh, all right. 
Why don't we take a little walk until it cools off a bit? So the three bears set out on their walk, leaving their breakfast on the table. Meanwhile, back at the old oak tree, Goldilocks suddenly woke to a wonderful smell of hot porridge. She followed the smell right to the cottage. There was nobody home, but a little thing like that didn't bother Goldilocks. Oh, joy, breakfast. Oh, that's too hot. I'll put some milk on this one. Oh, wow, that makes it too cold. Mmm, this one looks just right. And it tasted just right, too, clear to the bottom of the bowl. Then, because she hadn't had much sleep the night before, Goldilocks began to feel tired. Oh, these chairs look good. Oh, dear, this one's much too high. And this one's much too low. But this one is just right. So Goldilocks rocked and rocked in Oswald's tiny chair until one time she rocked just a little too far. But Goldilocks didn't care. After all, it wasn't her chair. Still, she needed a place to rest, so upstairs she went to lie down in one of the beds. Papa's bed... Well, Mama's bed was much too soft, but little Oswald's bed was, well, you guessed it, just right. So Goldilocks quickly dropped off to sleep just as the bears returned from their walk. I thought I told you to close the door, Oswald. I did. Perhaps somebody's been here while we were gone. Oh? Uh, anybody here? Oh, what the ding-dong! Somebody's been eating my porridge! Somebody's been eating my porridge! Somebody's been eating my porridge and didn't leave spoon one! Look in the other room, Bruce. Somebody's been rocking in my chair! Somebody's been rocking in my chair! Somebody's been rocking in my chair, and were they ever heavy? Bruce, someone's upstairs. Careful now, there may be trouble. Somebody's been sleeping in my bed. Somebody's been sleeping in my bed. Somebody's been sleeping in my bed. And here she is. Oh! Things got pretty frantic then. Until Goldilocks dashed out of the house and ran all the way home. Now, now, Bruce. She's only a people. She doesn't know any better. And I'll bet she sure learned a good lesson. Well, that was true. From that time on, Goldilocks was as careful as could be of everybody's things, even her own. So, of course, she lived happily ever after. And after a little house cleaning and mending, so did the three bears. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. Glad to have you with us. Now, Barkerville is going to show you a mystifying magic trick. I have here in my hand a very simple, ordinary toothpick. A plain, ordinary toothpick like all toothpicks. And now I'm going to break this toothpick in half and make it come back together again by just saying some simple magic words. Now watch. I take the handkerchief out of my pocket, just like that, and we'll put it right on the table, just like that. I'll place this ordinary toothpick right in the center of the handkerchief. Got that? See it right there? Right in the center, there's the toothpick. Fold over the handkerchief that way. Okay. And now, we'll shake it up to get it ready to break. And here, here is the toothpick right on top of that handkerchief. And now I'm going to break it. Watch as I break the toothpick. There. I broke it right in half. And now, we'll crumble up together and save the right magic words and out of this handkerchief will fall the toothpick, not broken up, but all back together in one piece. And the magic words today are Alakazam, Alakazooey, and here we go. Watch carefully, here comes the toothpick, all back together again in one piece, just like it was before I broke it. And there's nothing left in the handkerchief, nothing whatsoever. Boys and girls, I will show you tomorrow how you can do this very same magic trick and you'll surprise all your friends because they'll never know how you can do this trick. So see you tomorrow. Time to say now, Bozo, take it away and back to the big Bozo Circus. Hurry, 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 step right up, Bozo. Well, I see he coming over this way. Well, look who's coming this way. It's our pal. Oh, 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 o
Quack doggies, it's lunchtime. <laughs> Don't get a little snappy snack right here. Howdy, <laughs> boys and girls. It's lunchtime. Old Grandpa Smokey's knocking on for a half hour and get himself a little good lunch. Boy, there's nothing I like than a little, little snack for lunch. I'm going to make myself just a little bitty sandwich. Nothing too fancy, you know, just a, a little sandwich. And I just tuck this in there, so I like to keep myself nice and neat. There. Let's see now. Oh, pickles, yeah. That's good. Pickles, mustard, I need that. I need some mayonnaise, yeah. Oh, lettuce. I, I always put lettuce on my sandwich. Yep, and uh, oh, my knife and fork. I, I like to eat sneak like. Yeah, I use that to cut that. Some salt and pepper comes in handy. I like nice plate. Oh, look at that good lunch that Mrs. McNamara packed for me. Tomatoes. Oh, boy, I'm going to like. Woo, 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 woo. Listen to this. Onions. Onions. I love onions in a sandwich, boy. Oh, isn't that nice? Cold cuts, cold cuts, cold cuts, that's good. And a couple of weenies, a little weenie schizo there, that's good too, yeah. There, oh, 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 this is good. This is real good stuff here. This is sardines. I love sardines, yeah. That's good. Sardines are always good. Oh, look what else we got over there. What else we got? We got mm, mm, some cheese. I'll put the cheese somewhere. Where can I put the cheese? I'll move something over, yeah. That's good. I'll put the cheese over there. Well, well, I guess we're all set for a real good, delicious lunch. Now, let's see. Oh, now, quiet. Quiet, doggy. Quiet. Oh, I'm, uh, here. Here, wait, wait, wait. Wait, doggy. Okay, here you go, boys. Now, quiet. Eat the bologna. Be a good dog. They just love it to eat what I'm eating, too. Well, now, I'll make a little... Now, I, I don't want to be, be selfish. I, I think I'll just make a little sandwich. I won't make one this big. I'll just make just a little one. I'll just, I'll just cut, I'll just cut a little piece off. That's good. That's better. There. i just make a, I'll just make a little sandwich. Well now, start off with, first thing I'm going to do is spread a little mayonnaise on the bread because I like a little mayonnaise on the bread there. Yeah, that's good. Just a little mayonnaise. That's better. Fine. And whoop, 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 whoop. Be neat and nice. That's it. A little more on this side. Good. Now, first thing I always do when I make a sandwich, I always put some... Quiet, quiet, doggy, quiet! Let old grandpa make a sandwich. Oh, I never can eat in peace. Here, boy, take a little Swiss cheese. Okay, buddy, there you go. Now, quiet, oh, they always get in the way when I'm making a sandwich. I just spread a little lettuce all around here. That's good. Little lettuce there, little lettuce here, over that way. Put the pickles over here, don't get in the way. They come later. All righty, and now I'll put the onions on top of that. That's good there. Now, what else shall I, I know I start off with? A little Swiss cheese. A good little Swiss cheese over there, and a piece over there, and a piece over there. And then, and then I'm going to put a little mustard on top of the Swiss cheese. Oh, boy, I sure love mustard on a Swiss cheese. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. And then, let's see, what else should I put on it? What else? Oh, I know. I'll put a couple onions. Onions are always good. Put some onions on that thing. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, doggy. Let Grandpa Smokey work. Come on now. Oh, all right. Here's a piece of salami. Here's a piece of salami, buddy. Don't bite it, Grandpa. A piece of salami. There you go. That could quiet some up now. And I thought, oh, oh, yeah. I'll put some bologna. Put some bologna on top of the sandwich like that. That's good. A couple pieces of bologna there. Some more lettuce. Some more lettuce better go on top. That's good. Oh. I put some hot dogs. Hot dogs are always good. The sandwich I make, I love hot dogs. What else should I put in? Put in, oh, some tomatoes. Oh, I think I'm nearly ready for this delicious sandwich. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Okay, let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Forgot some salt and pepper. Some salt and pepper. Put a little salt and pepper on top of this thing. Put a little, I just love salt and pepper. I just love salt and pepper. Good. <laughs> Well, I'm ready. I'm ready for a most delicious... Uh-oh. How am I going to get my little old mouth around this thing? It sure looks great. Well, I guess I just have to persevere and take a great big bite with a big breath. Blood <sighs> blood! <sighs> 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 Did it again! Bozo! 
the world's most famous clown. 